And now, transcribed for tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, the story of a dancer who, still in her dressing room after the theater is emptied, spends the most terrifying moments of her life. So now, starring Shirley Mitchell and Vic Perrin, here is tonight's suspense play, Blind Date. The DeMarcos and Mamie had said goodbye. That left me alone backstage. <laughs> I'm always late anyway. Eight acts on the bill, and I'm always the last to leave the theater. Hiya, cutie. I mean, coming into a lady's dressing room without knocking. I never heard of a call boy who didn't know how to say, are you decent? Oh, relax. Take it easy. We can't all be double-jointed. What do you want? He's outside. Who's outside? Oh, some John you won't like. Says he's got a date with you. Oh, baby, you're closing tonight. Tomorrow you'll be in far off Detroit. Then will you wish you'd done the loop with me once. Huh. I'll let you into our own circuit tonight. Have a date, thank you. Go out and tell him to come in, if you please. You can do better than him. You got talent in those joints. You need somebody to watch out for you. In the profession, I mean. That's a cute little trick like you taking fourth billing to a lot of acrobats. You stick and... to your callboy profession, and I'll worry about my billing. Yeah. I'm still mad because I tried to kiss you. Ah, oh, Gloria, this is your last night. And... I told oh. you before I don't like to be touched by you or anybody else. Hey. I'm beginning to think you mean it. Get out of here. Okay, okay. But your stage door, Johnny, ain't gonna be no improvement. Believe me. The idea. The very idea. Oh, darn it. Where'd I put that powder pot? Oh. I believe I'm on time. The clock on the Wrigley Tower has just struck 11. I'm Vincent Hawthorne. Oh, yeah. Yes, and I I'm thought so... the day wonderful till I saw the night. Come again? Not what you expected? Of course not. Well, I... Uh, won't you come in, Mr... Uh, Mr... Hawthorne. Oh, here, uh, let me take your hat, Mr. Hawthorne. Thank you. Uh, I'll only be a minute. I'm leaving Chicago. Close tonight, you know. Detroit tomorrow. I was delayed with packing and all. I'm not quite dressed. Oh, there. That's the props, anyway. A theatrical trunk. All this is a big thrill to me. Gloria Le Fay, theater. Rush. Gloria Le Fay, trends in bends. That's me. Well, well. This is my first experience meeting an artist. Oh. Gloria. A lovely name, Gloria. It fits you. You're a very lovely girl. Hmm. And what have you got there? It's a flower. A rose for you. Here. Oh, well, thanks. I like roses. I thought it would look nice in your hair, Gloria. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. That's real nice. Thanks. For your hair, yes. And this. This is something for the two of us. Is that whiskey? Oh, Hardly. Champagne, Paul Roger, 37. Has a fine bouquet. Uh. <laughs> Should lend a note of cheer to our little dressing room, eh? See? Two glasses. I thought of everything. Fine wines should always be sipped from crystal. Don't you agree? I planned on going out. Oh, certainly. But I thought that... Well, you thought wrong. Whatever you thought, Mr. Hawthorne. We aren't staying here. Now, I'll only be a minute. I'll finish dressing behind the screen. Say, um, Mr. Um, Hawthorne. Yes? Uh, what's your first name? Vincent, my dear. Say, Vincent, um, Vincent, just so we get everything clear on both sides, um, <clears throat> this is a sort of a funny situation. Uh, I don't know quite how... Are you concerned because we're having what is called a, a blind date? That's it. I just wanted it to be understood on both sides that I am not in the habit. But lately, I've been thinking that, after all, how is an artist like myself who spent practically all her life training for a profession ever going to meet people? You get the point? Certainly, I understand completely. We'll just have our little midnight supper. I and... was coming to that. Uh, when I was a little girl... By the way, did you ever catch an act called Diane? Diane? Now, I'm not exactly positive well, that... Well, you'd hardly have forgotten her if you had. Diane was my mother. Oh, indeed. She was a... A, a contortionist. It's almost entirely her act that I'm doing. Well, when we were playing Chicago once, when I was a little girl, we went to a little restaurant off the Gold Coast, which enjoyed largely theatrical clientele. It's called Gregory's. It's still there. I looked it up in the phone book. I thought we'd go there. Sounds delightful. Good. <clears throat> you uh, say your mother is dead. Yes. Diane died three months ago. I'm terribly, terribly sorry, my dear. 
They say the food at Gregory's... You were very close to your mother, weren't you? She was an artist, too, and she taught you how to accomplish all of those... those remarkable feats you've been performing on the stage. Diane taught me everything I know. That's really remarkable what you do at the end of your act when you stand on that chair and bend all the way back so slowly and then take the goblet of wine with your teeth and drink it. Oh, thank you. I've worked hard. Of course, either you're double-jointed or you're not. Yes. Uh, where do you live? I was born in London. Oh, gee, I'd like to get over to London. London is a very lonely place. The Palladium. I'll bet that's... It's full of lonely people. Oh, now... The world is full of lonely people, Gloria. Hey, that kind of talk can ruin an evening. If you're going to talk like that, I don't know about it. Maybe this will cheer you up. How do you like it? What are you doing with that knife? Just opening our bottle, Gloria. Well, I told you I didn't want to drink here. I want to go to Gregory's. Let's put the show on the road. Well, here's one for the road. A little glass of wine will do us both good. Nobody needs a knife that big to open a bottle with. It's a trick knife. See? You see, you press the little button, and it's gone. Just like that. Disappeared into the hand. Well, I don't like it. People get hurt with knives. I don't like your knife. And while we're at it, I don't think I like you either. I'm sorry, Gloria. I'm sorry my knife frightened you. I don't know. I think you'd better Please, go. Please, Gloria, don't be angry with me. I'm most anxious to take you to Gregory's, where you once went with your mother, dear Diane, many years ago. I don't know. I... And we'll have something you didn't have at that time. Cognac. French cognac. Hmm? In a quiet corner by candlelight. There'll be music. What does a girl do when she draws a fellow like you? Why, she has a little glass of wine to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good, here we go. Um, you haven't said anything about my dress. One for you, one for me. Oh, thanks. Here's to a pleasant evening, Vincent. No, Gloria. Here's to us. Okay. Here's to us. Yeah. That's a little better. Mmm. Nice. Mm. <laughs> um, Vincent, what does somebody like you do for a living? I was a part of Rembrandt and Morris wine merchants. Oh. Gloria, when you bend back like you do and you drink out of that glass... Is that wine you drink? Oh, no. That's only colored water. Oh. Did you know that the cork in the bottle is sometimes more expensive than the wine itself? You don't say. It's imported from Spain, you know. That's what costs. Oh. Another thing I've wondered about, is it true it's bad luck to whistle in the dressing room? Oh, uh, that's silly. That's a chorus girl superstition. Artists don't worry about that. Well, I'm grateful you answered my note this afternoon. Mm. Uh, Vincent, why did you send the note to me? With those six beautiful Cardoza sisters on the same bill. I thought them very ordinary girls, not in the least beautiful. Not as you are beautiful. Oh, now. What made you answer my note? I had three birds this morning. Birds? Tea leaves means good luck. And then when I got your note, naturally I took it to Mamie. She does handwriting, too. She said you were a fine gentleman. Otherwise, I wouldn't have answered you because I've never had a blind date before. Then I'm most grateful to Mamie. Well, I, uh, I think it's just about time we left. Oh, I don't know, Gloria. I see you have a portable phonograph. Travel with it? It's an old one. Doesn't work too well. I've got to have it fixed. I'm very fond of music, Gloria. What do you have here? It doesn't work. This one. Moonlight Madonna. It's the music you use in your act. Let's play it. I, I told you the phonograph doesn't work. All right, now, come on, I let's... think you're wrong, Gloria. You see? It works fine, see? I finished my drink, so come Couldn't on. Couldn't we have another one and listen to the record? No, I've had enough and you've had enough. Now, let's get Must the... Must you wear that fur piece? For your information, Mr. Wise Guy, this fur piece was given to me by Mr. John Meston and is practically unattainable on today's market. You just can't get it nowadays. I can wear this anywhere, anywhere at all. What I mean, Gloria, it doesn't do you justice. Nothing is beautiful enough for a girl with lips like... <laughs> Don't touch me. Don't ever touch me. 
You shouldn't have done that, Gloria. When I was a little girl, one night I was standing in the wings watching Diane, and a stagehand kissed me on the cheek. And I just... Well, he's still carrying the scar on his forehead. I took the heel of my shoe, and I hit, and he... Don't ever try to touch me. Never. Now, we've had our wine, and it's a quarter after 11, and we're going. We're going right now, understand? We didn't hear the rest of the record, Gloria. Get out. Get out of my dressing room. I don't want to leave yet, Gloria. Why, you... I'll show you. What? What? It's no use. I have the key. Bill! Bill, come here and help me! Bill! If that's the name of the stage doorman I met coming in... (gasps) A liberal gratuity, a gentle hint, and he obligingly left you and me alone, Gloria. There. There. Now, aren't you going to take the drink I fixed for you? I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of anybody. There's no reason to be afraid of me, Gloria. Take your wine and sit down. Listen to the music. Here. I don't want it. Now, why did you do that? Because I don't want to have another drink here. I want to leave. Unlock the door. Don't be impatient, Gloria. We'll leave in a moment. Why can't we leave now? I want to get out for for some fresh air. You said you weren't frightened? I'm not. Well, then why do you want... You you promised to take me to Gregory's for supper. I've I've done four shows a day for six days, and I'd like to relax. Tomorrow I've got to... Of course you would. Look, I'll I'll even change my my fur piece, Mr. Hoff. Vincent? You know, Gloria, loneliness is a terrible thing. Loneliness is awful. You can wander in a city of a million people and yet have no one to speak with. And you wander and you think there is no cure for loneliness. But as I watched you there dancing on the stage, I knew that loneliness has a cure. Just a simple kiss will banish loneliness forever. Well, you're not going to kiss me, I'll tell you that. I don't care how lonely you are. And I'm sick of this record. Wish I'd never answered your note, I'll tell you that. But you did answer it, and here we are. A girl can make a mistake. No, Gloria. You didn't make a mistake. I'm a humble man. I apologize to you. Unlock that door. I've been studying you, Gloria, ever since I came in the dressing room tonight. There's more to you than just a pretty face. That kind of talk doesn't impress me. It'll get you exactly nowhere. Unlock that door. What if I told you you'd successfully passed the test? I really have been testing you. Oh, yeah? When first I saw you six days ago, I knew there was a lot more to you than just a pretty face. And I came here tonight to to test you. Well, what do you mean? When I tried to kiss you, that was the test. I had to find out what you were like. A man has to be careful, too. About a girl, I mean. And when you wouldn't let me kiss you, I knew you were someone I... I oh, Gloria... I don't get you at all. Scaring a girl half to death one minute, and now you're almost as if you were going to cry. I have a confession, Gloria. I've cried a great deal in my life. Really? Have you really? A very great deal. Well, um... Well, then, now that I've passed your test, you, you know what kind of a girl I am, don't you? I know exactly what kind of a girl you are, Gloria. And we understand each other. Perfectly. I know you, and you know me. Well, well then, uh, let's... Let's put the show on the road. There's just one thing. Oh, what? Before we go out, I'd like to see you for the last time in the costume you wore for your act. What are you The t- green one. I like that one best. The golden spotlight... It's not with... here. I've already sent the trunk. I keep it into the station. I don't believe that. What's this thing? That's my other trunk. Give me the key, Gloria. I will not. All right, then I'll open it my own way. Put that knife away. Gloria, a knife is a very handy instrument. A very handy instrument to have with you. Stop that. Stop that. You're going to break the lock. Get away from that trunk. Don't do that. Don't ever try to take my knife away from me. Don't ever try to take my knife away from me. I asked you to do a simple little thing. I asked you to wear your costume for me because you look very lovely in it. A simple little thing that would take only a minute of your time. But you say it's packed and shipped. But I don't think it is, and I'm going to find out. Yes, I'm going to find out. 
There. I have it. And here's the dress on top. Your lovely green costume. I won't put it on. Do you hear me? I, I, I won't put it on for you or anybody else. Now, on top of everything else, you've broken my trunk, and I just don't Here. Know... Go behind the screen and put it on. Now. All right. All right, I'll, I'll put it on. I'll put it on. That's a good girl. You know, Gloria, I didn't mean anything by showing you my knife. It's just that I want to see you exactly as you look when you're performing on the stage. You're so very lovely, Gloria. You're so lovely. All that isn't going to make me forget that knife or what you've done. I'm just a humble man, a, a human being, same as you. But I'm lonely, Gloria. Terribly, unendurably lonely. Ah, you've got friends. Have you put on the costume, Gloria? Yes. Here it is. All right. Take your look, Mr. Hawthorne. Well? Lovely. It's lovely. All right, then. Now I... Well, what are you... What are you doing? How can you perform without music? Why else would I ask you to put on your costume? You're going to perform for me. I'm not putting on a special act for anybody. You can't imagine, Gloria, the effect it has on me. The way you twist and turn, slowly, silently. So slow, so lovely, and so alone. So very much alone. Alone? How could I be alone in a theater full of people? You can be alone in a city of a million people. You had no one in the theater, Gloria, even though it was crowded. But now, here, in your dressing room, you have me to watch. And you can perform for me alone. Hey, what's the idea of turning off the lights? All but the ones around your mirror. That's your spotlight, Gloria. You're on stage. Only it's all for me and no one else. <gasps> don't, don't scream again. Don't scream, whatever you do. It upsets me. If, if, if. If I do my act for you, if, if I do it just the way I do it on stage, only, only just for you, if I do it for you like that, will you go away? Yes, Gloria. That's all I want you to do. Just as if you were on stage. Uh, all right. All right, sure. Sure. That's right, Gloria. Graceful, very graceful, slowly, slowly. Oh. Why can't you do it for me? Why? Why? You weren't clumsy in the theater when all those other people were watching. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's such a small room. Never mind, never mind. Go on, go on. Go on. Yes. Yes, that's right, Gloria. Easy. Slowly, remember. Slowly. I can't! I can't! I can't! No matter what you're going to do, and I don't know what it is, I just can't go on with my act anymore. I just can't do it. I'm a decent, self-respecting girl. And I accepted your invitation, and I thought you were going to be nice because of your handwriting. And you've got me so scared, I don't... I, no matter what I do or say, I can't seem to please you. Why can't you go away? Why don't you just get out of my dressing room and leave me alone? I hate you! I hate you! You understand? I hate you! You hate me. Well, let me tell you something. Every girl with a nice dress and pretty face hates me, Gloria. I don't care anymore. I was lonely and I went to the theater and I saw you there on stage and I thought you were beautiful. I thought if I could see you alone in that same old costume, if you wore it just for me and performed just for me, then I wouldn't be lonely anymore. That would be enough, but it isn't enough. Don't, don't come near me. Don't touch me. A kiss is the cheapest thing in the world. No, no, stay away. A kiss means nothing to you. But to me, it means everything. Please, no, stay away. A kiss would cure my loneliness, Gloria. I'll never kiss you. Oh, I think you will. 
I think you will. <laughs> a knife. Oh, please. Now. Now, just tilt your head back. <laughs> That's right. Now. Vincent. D darling. What? I said, darling. Why'd you say that? What, what would you say if... If I really kissed you. What do you mean? You... You said a kiss means everything to you. Do you want me to really kiss you? I... I can't believe it. I... I'd kiss you. I... I really would, but... But what? Gloria? I'm... I'm afraid of, of your knife. Do you actually want to kiss me? Yes. But the knife scares me. I... I never meant to use it, Gloria. Here. <laughs> you take it. Now. I'll kiss you! <laughs> I'll kiss you! <laughs> I'll kiss you! for him ever since he left London. They knew all about him. So they let me go. Self-defense. Loneliness is a terrible thing, he said. Well, no matter how lonesome I get, I'll never have another blind date as long as I live. Suspense, in which Shirley Mitchell starred as Gloria and Vic Perrin as Vincent with Lee Millar as Bill. Next week, the story of a motion picture producer and a young actress who finds to her dismay that she has rather more dramatic talent than even she ever hoped for. We call it Shooting Star. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and transcribed by Norman MacDonald, with music composed by Lucian Morawick and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Blind Date was specially written for Suspense by E. Jack Newman and Harrison Egley. Listen while you work. Enjoy The Second Mrs. Burton, Monday through Friday in the daytime on the CBS Radio Network.